This isn't an ordinary missile. It's a hypersonic missile. That means it's way faster than supersonic, several times faster to be exact. This specific missile was built by Russia. China and the United States are also developing hypersonic missiles that could carry nuclear warheads and evade traditional defense systems. If that sounds like the makings of a Cold War-style three-way arms race, that's because it most definitely is. And what could go wrong with that? Five nuclear scientists, described as the elite of Russia's main nuclear test site, killed with two others when a small nuclear reactor exploded. They were testing an engine, thought to be for this new cruise missile. Here's what's behind the race to develop hypersonic weapons. In 10 years, the field of aeronautics has kept pace with man's desire to fly ever higher, faster, and farther. So what we're seeing now on the landscape is that the United States has been involved in wars in the Middle East, whereas adversaries like Russia and China have had a lot more time to spend researching and developing hypersonic weapons. So currently, the United States does not have any defense against a hypersonic weapon. On top of that, they don't also have any hypersonic weapons of their own. So when you think about the top competitors in this field, you have Russia sprinting to develop hypersonic weapons and you also have China sprinting to develop theirs. Meanwhile, the United States has been playing back up to this sort of effort. When we call something supersonic, we're saying it travels faster than the speed of sound, which is about 343 meters per second in air. Think fighter jets and the Concorde. When you hear the phrase Mach 1, that's the speed of sound. Mach 2, 3, 4, and 5 refer to something traveling twice the speed of sound, or three times, four times. You get the idea. Technically, hypersonic speeds happen at Mach 5 and above. NASA's space shuttle, for example, could travel at 25 times the speed of sound when it re-enters the atmosphere. When we talk about hypersonic weapons, there are two major types in development. There are hypersonic cruise missiles. This kind of weapon is launched from aircraft and act like super fast, self-propelled cruise missiles. And there are hypersonic glide vehicles. These get a boost from a rocket and then glide at super high altitudes before hitting their targets. All that said, hypersonic weapons are virtually impossible to defend against. Most national missile defense networks were set up to deter traditional intercontinental ballistic missiles like pop flies in baseball, not hypersonic weapons. They need something like a shortstop to catch them. So the simplest way to explain ballistic missile flight is if I were on a baseball field and I threw someone a ball, you kind of have an idea of where that baseball is going to land. It'll make an arc in the sky and then it'll drop down. For hypersonic weapons, they take on their own specific flight patterns. So those are not predictable, and that's why they're the biggest challenge right now for the United States. So a hypersonic missile, for instance, can get arched into the sky, and then it can make a right-hand turn or a left-hand turn. So if you think about that baseball analogy, think about a baseball going up in the air and then all of a sudden jutting to the right or jutting to the left or going up a few feet and then going down a few feet. Attention missile sites, fire on designated targets. You may fire when ready. Russia, China, and the United States all want to be the first military with functional hypersonic weapons. So what the Pentagon is trying to do now is equip all of the service branches, the Navy, the Marine Corps, the Air Force, and the Army with their version of a hypersonic weapon. As we look to what potential defense industries are sort of home suited to win these types of contracts, Lockheed Martin really is in their swim lane here. Lockheed created the Blackbird, which was able to achieve hypersonic flight and a reconnaissance type level. China has a hypersonic glide weapon called the WU-14 in development since 2014. It can reportedly reach speeds of Mach 10. Russia has several hypersonic weapons in development. In 2018, Russian President Vladimir Putin brought hypersonic weapons into the forefront when he announced that testing of one such weapon was complete, the avant-garde. Putin claimed the weapon can reach speeds of Mach 20. There's also the hypersonic cruise missile known as Skyfall. So one of the weapons that Putin showed off back in March uh, last year was a nuclear-powered cruise missile. So that cruise missile, he boasted, could have unlimited flight. So basically what it does is it's not running off of gasoline or anything or rockets. It is constantly fueling itself. So in theory, it's flying at hypersonic speeds and it could fly anywhere around the world. The problem with that is the technical challenges in developing something of that magnitude are significant. And based off of my reporting, Russia hasn't been able to launch 
this weapon and have a successful test flight of it. So as these hypersonic weapons are emerging and developing and the ambition is there for Russia and China to add them to their arsenal, what we're seeing happen is deteriorating relationships with the United States as well. For instance, with Russia and the US, the INF Treaty collapsed. When we talk about renegotiating potential treaties, hypersonic weapons could be something that either party decides to add into this new breed of threat moving forward. The hypersonic arms race is a big deal for national security, and it means big business for U.S. defense firms. The developments of the hypersonic weapons arms race is going to open up a massive market for defense industry because when you think about the Navy, the Air Force, the Army all wanting to have their own breed of hypersonic weapon, there's more than enough for defense industry to pick up all of those types of contracts out of the Pentagon. It's also an arms race among American defense contractors. Currently, the Pentagon has nearly a dozen programs tasked with developing and defending against this new breed of weapons. Last year, the Pentagon awarded two multi-billion dollar hypersonic weapons contracts to Lockheed Martin. And when it comes to hypersonic flight, the defense giant is playing in its home court. Lockheed is also in the process of developing the SR-72, a hypersonic unmanned plane dubbed the son of the Blackbird. Hypersonic aircraft have been designed and built to fly to the dark edges of space. As the world's major powers fight to develop these new weapons, they'll need new ways to defend against them as well. And that's not cheap. 